Cisco Extended Detection and Response, ICE integration with XDR Analytics. So if you're having your XDR Analytics portal here and you cruise on over to Settings, Integrations, and then Integrations, go down here to ICE, you're going to realize, hey, what is this ICE integration and what is it going to give me and such? This is what this video is going to be about, how to go through, create the integration, what it's going to give you, but the big part of it is you pretty much already have to have um, at least Passive ID set up. Um, from ICE to your Active Directory domain and what it's going to do is it's going to pull down attribution information about the user so when, when you're looking at a lot of the events and everything instead of just like an IP address you'll know who um, is actually authenticated in there what their machine name is and any other kind of information you can get out of ICE so let's actually go through and do this integration together the integration between um, Cisco XDR's PNM sensor and PX Grid in ICE is done with certificates. So when it comes to certificates, one of the most important things we're going to have to worry about is naming. So we want to go through the PNM sensor and make sure that um, it can resolve the ICE device. And we're going to make sure that all the naming is resolvable from the PNM sensor. And I'm going to probably go a little overboard with this, but you know, every time I've done troubleshooting um, in regards to this integration, it's always, always come back to uh, naming. So I'm going to run through a bunch of things here. Not everything is going to be specific to the uh, certificate name resolution and stuff like that, but I'm just going to go through all the things that are kind of important to naming when it comes to your PNM sensor so that we can actually remove that as a possible issue when we actually do the integration between ICE and um, our XDR PNM sensor here. So first things first, we're going to cat out the hosts file. So cat slash etsy slash hosts. And you can see in there on the uh, second line, 192.168.45.245, I've got the um, the full name for it, lab-pnm-2.example.com and lab-pnm-2. And the other place I want you to do this at is I want you to cat out your um, config.local file. So go over here to slash opt slash observable dash ona and then config.local. And you can see on my first line there, I name my uh, PNM sensor uh, the same thing as the um, name that's being resolved to. So uh, because it actually will put something in there by default, and I go through that in my uh, PNM build um, scenarios. I've got a bunch of videos. You should probably go through, look through those if you're building your PNM sensor from scratch. But I kind of talk about um, the reasons why we do that. So let me clear this out. The other thing I want you to do is I want to make sure that it's going to resolve the ICE server correctly too. So we can do a quick NS lookup in here and I've cleverly named mine ice.example.com. In a real live environment you'll probably have more than one ICE server. Now, this is a lab environment, I only got the one, but make sure you check them all just to make sure the resolution comes correctly and it does. Um, if you're wondering um, if you know if it doesn't come back correctly you need to ch check your um, DNS settings you can do a resolve R -E -S -O -V -E -C -T -L status did I spell that correctly yeah I think so and then grep out DNS excuse me put it in caps for this particular one there they are so that's is my DNS server if you need to do any changes you do that using the net plan um, methodology here so you'd actually go to uh, change directory to Etsy slash net plan and you would be able to go in here and you can use Vim or you can use uh, V or you can use Nano whatever you like um, actually I better check to make sure I got the right one in there yep there it is so um, I'm gonna Vim 01 uh, net config dot yaml and you can go in down in there and change your um, DNS settings or whatever else you might need to set in here and then I'm going to go ahead and get out of this you know if, um, this isn't a class on how to use Vim um, but as soon as you do that you would need to do a pseudo net plan apply if you made any changes to it and then you can of course um, do another NS lookup on it to make sure it's working with uh, whatever new um, DNS servers you put in there if it didn't resolve correctly now, I didn't change mine obviously but that's how you go ahead and go about doing it all right, step two is we've got to go into ICE and generate a certificate. And like I said, if you need more support in ICE, you know, this isn't intended to be um, a tutorial in how to set up ICE and passive identity in ICE and connect it to Active Directory and all that. There's a lot of videos out there. I'll try and find one to link 
um, to this. So make it a little easier if you guys haven't done that and you want to do some of that kind of stuff. But if you need, like I said, this is if it's already up and running and everything, and we're just going to integrate our um, PNM sensor into it to be able to pull down some uh, information into Cisco XDR. All right, here we are in our ICE server. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here to the left-hand side to this little burger that we call it. Now, if you're seeing a different menuing because you are on ICE version 3.3 or later, I believe they changed the menu so that the menu is now all the way on the left-hand side over here. Um, you know, you're still going to the same basic place, though. So where are we going? Uh, we're going to go in here. We're going to go to Administration, PX Grid Services, Client Management. We're going to go over here to Certificates. And what do I want to do? I want to generate a single certificate without a CIS certificate signing request. I'm going to put in the name of my PNM sensor here. It is lab-pnm-2.example.com. And what is this? The lab PNM sensor for XDR. Um, PX grid certificate should be on this page by default. Uh, the subject alternative name, we're going to do the first, we're going to do the fully qualified domain name. And remember, we spent a lot of time making sure that naming was all set up on our PNM sensor correctly and everything, and everything's resolving to each other like it should be. Well, we got to still spell it correctly, though. There we go, lab-pnm-2.example.com. And even though we spent so much time doing that, this is what I will often do, is I will also add the IP address for the PNM sensor that this is getting installed on, 45.245 in my particular lab's case. Certificate download format is going to be the PEM format, and we put in a password, Cisco123. Yep, that's the crazy password I'm actually using right here for this. I'm hoping you're going to use something a little more complex than my lab example in your real environment. Let's go ahead and click Create. And this will spin for a minute while our certificate is being created, and it should pop up up here in the upper right-hand corner when it's completed. There it is. It took a minute, didn't it? All right, the next thing we're going to do is take that certificate we just created on the ICE server, and we're going to go and install it on the PNM sensor. And actually, all of that is done from the XDR Analytics portal, too. So it's actually pretty easy to do that. We don't need to SSH and do any SCP transfers or anything. We're going to do it all straight from the XDR portal. Here we are in our... XDR Analytics Portal, and where do we want to go? We want to go to Settings, Integrations. Integrations on the left-hand side, we're going to go down to ICE. And we're going to select the sensor that we're actually going to be doing this on. In our case, it is a Lab PNM2 sensor. Uh, the name of the ICE server is ice.example.com. Again, why we need name resolution to work. Uh, password that I cleverly came up with was Cisco123 and then of course the let's browse down to the um, appropriate certificate that we just previously created there it is we're gonna select and we are going to click submit If you set up ICE to auto approve um, all um, PX grid subscriptions then um, as soon as the PNM sensor reaches out with the correct certificate, it will automatically approve um, the subscription. Uh, to verify that, you know, you can go into um, your ICE server here, and you're going to click on the little burger. You're going to go over to Administration, PX Grid Services, down to Settings, and you will see the option here, Automatically Approve New Certificate-Based Account. So if I applied with the certificate created on ICE, then um, I'm good to go here. If, however, your ICE server is set up to manually approve, go to the burger, administration, client man PX grid client management, find the pending um, subscription from the lab PNM sensor, click on it, and click approve. Yep, we approve, and boom, it's all of a sudden it says enabled, and the PX grid. Um, uh, integration with um, the PNM sensor is complete. And we'll go back to the PNM sensor and verify that now. All right, after you hit submit, it takes a minute. 
Um, you may go in here and you're like, well, we need to verify it's working right away. And if you scroll down to the bottom of here where they show us um, whether the integration worked or not, let's scroll down there. And you can see mine is green. I got a green check mark, so mine actually integrated correctly. My lab PNM2 is, and the server name never seems to come up. Um, I don't know why. But anyways, um, if you get the green check mark, then you did make a connection to the PX grid. If you get a orange triangle with an exclamation, something went wrong. Remember, I've been saying for a while now it's usually naming, but something went wrong. Maybe there's something wrong with PX grid. Maybe there's something wrong with the way you created the certificate. Maybe it was a naming error. Sometimes it's difficult to troubleshoot. There's some troubleshooting in the documentation that you can go through, some logs you can look at. Um, but sometimes it also just takes a minute. You'll go down here and it'll be an orange triangle with an exclamation and you're sitting around waiting and waiting and waiting for how long it's going to take. You know what, just ref give it five or ten minutes, refresh the page, go down and look again and see if it fixed itself. Like I said, sometimes it takes a minute for it to make the connection. If like after five or ten minutes it's still the uh, orange triangle with the exclamation, you can try some of the troubleshooting steps. Maybe we'll go over them later in this video um, that's in the documentation, um, some of the logs you can look at. Or um, if you um, that doesn't help you, you may actually need tax support at this um, time. So, you know, because like I said, it could be an ICE issue, it could be a certificate issue, it could be a reachability issue, it could be a naming issue. Sometimes it's hard to run to ground what the issue might be. All right, another way to verify things are working correctly after you do your integration, you can go in here to investigate, event viewer, and there should be a new ICE tab available to us at this point. And there it is. We're going to click on ICE. And you can see we've got a couple of authentications, you know, two from me, um, one from administrator. You can actually go over here and open it up by clicking the carrot, and you'll see a bunch of information that we got from PX Grid about um, this particular user when that user logged in. There's a lot of other things that ICE integration will do with it, but this is kind of verifies. If we can see it in here, if we go in the event viewer and we can see it in the ICE tab, then everything's working like it's supposed to. This is the ICE integration guide for the XDR analytics. It still says secure cloud analytics, but we're going to go down here to the troubleshooting section. You can look at the first thing, DNS issues, naming. That's what I've been saying all this time. Certificate issues, no sessions. Let's just go ahead and click on troubleshooting. And it kind of walks you through some of the error messages you may see, name or service not known. You know, that's a DNS issue. SSL certificate verification error. Um, that's a certificate issue. Um, and if you look down here, you can see like with the naming, they're talking about making sure the naming actually was correct and all those names matched up. That's why I spent some time earlier talking about that. Some of the certificate issues that are possible. Um, and then, of course, it goes right back to, you know, it's a certificate issue. There, you know, back to naming again, correct host name, uh, session for reachability, uh, that kind of a thing. Um, but uh, there's even a way to do this a little more manually um, that it talks about down here. Um, that's kind of a long process, but um, if you're still having trouble and you want to try that way, you by all means you can. But if this isn't working for you, like I said, and you can't determine it from the information they give you and they keep going back to naming here as well, then by all means you'll probably need tax support um, to help you out to go a little deeper in the logs. Like I said, it might actually be an issue with the ICE server itself when you set up PX Grid. This document isn't too bad. It, does, it has a lot of information. It even kind of walks you through some of the um, uh, setup of your um, PX Grid environment, um, but that's way out of scope for this. If you're trying to set up um, passive or active identity, there's a lot of YouTube videos out there, and some of those are quite extensive um, that would be better suited to go through with that. But this kind of assumes that PX Grid, in my case, passive ID is already set up in my environment, and I was just going to make sure that XDR could take advantage of that. All right, as indicated previously, a little bit of troubleshooting here. Um, checking out the logs for this particular integration. Where do you want to go? You want to go to change slash OPT slash uh, the observable uh, subdirectory. You're then going to go to logs and the ONA underscore service subdirectory. And in here, well, you got to spell it right. 
S-E-R-V-I-C-E. -E. There we go. And we can LS this out. And you can see there's a whole bunch of log files in here. The one we're interested in is ona-ice-polar.log. You tail that out, dash ice dash dot polar dot log. There we go. And you can see in my particular case, everything is working correctly. There's no um, error messages here. Four basic steps, you know, naming, make sure it's accurate. That keeps you out of so much trouble later on in this. Uh, that's why I spent so much time on it in the beginning. Uh, step two, generate a cert on ICE. We saw how to go in and do that real quick. Make a cert just specifically for the PNM sensor. I use both the fully, fully qualified domain name and the IP address. Uh, add the certificate to the PNM sensor from the XDR Analytics portal. That was pretty easy. Just upload it with the password and everything. And then if you have auto approval set up on your ICE server, it will automatically approve anybody coming in with a um, one of its um, certificates. If you've got it set up for manual, just go in there and approve it manually. And But remember, give it a little bit of time. Uh, sometimes it takes um, a few minutes to, um, to all sync up.